So now if you look back at Isaiah 42, when he says of this servant, the Messiah, he says, I will give you as a covenant for the people. In other words, Messiah himself is the covenant. That's why at, at Passover, when he took the cup, he said, this is my blood poured out for the remission of sins. This is the new covenant in my blood. He is the covenant that God makes with Israel. He is the fulfillment of all the covenant promises made to Abraham, the covenants made about the, the land, the land covenant, the covenant made to David, you'll have a king to sit on your throne. He is the covenant, he is the fulfillment of all the covenants, and he is, as the Messiah, the covenant with whom we have entered into a relationship with. That's why he says, I am the resurrection. It's the same kind of thing as saying I, that he is the covenant, he's the means of salvation. He is the mechanism for the covenants to come to fruition. In other words, Isaiah 42 is telling us, Behold, the Messiah, who is my servant, and through his service is going to enable the covenant relationship that I have with Israel to come to fullest fruition. All of the covenant promises will be fulfilled in him. All of the covenant expectations are found in him. He is to be the center of everything that God is doing. That's why the writer to the Jewish believers in the book of Paul, the book of Hebrews, says Messiah is superior to the angels. He's superior to Moses. He's superior to the law. He's superior to the temple. He's superior to the sacrifice. He's superior to the high priest. He's superior to everything because as Isaiah states it, he is the one who is our covenant. I will give you as a covenant. As a consequence of being in Messiah, I've said many times, right? That's the most important phrase in all of Paul's writings. By virtue of being in Messiah, we are in the covenant because we're in him and he is the covenant. And that's what binds us with the living God and promises us eternal life.